What's going on guys, this is Steve for Android at Night and today I'm going to be giving you my first impressions on LG's latest flagship, the G6. This is the successor to LG's kind of doomed concept of modularity with the G5 and it really is going back to basics and the question is, has that worked? The main event on the LG G6 is the screen. So this display is a 5.7 inch 1440 by 2880 Gorilla Glass 5 display and the really unique thing about this is that the aspect ratio instead of being 16 by 9 is 18 by 9. This means the phone is a little bit taller than you're used to. I think the 18 by 9 aspect ratio kind of makes sense. It means that the screen feels a lot bigger and it makes the phone feel smaller, especially when it's in your palm it's not as wide as some other 5.7 inch phones. And the ratio of the front of the display to the screen is 78.6. This isn't quite as high as something like the Galaxy S8. However, compare this to something like the Pixel from last year and the difference is just night and day. The one thing that's irritating at the moment is there's not a huge amount of content which can actually take advantage of the 18x9 format. And this does mean that when you're watching something like a YouTube video, you get these really ugly black bands on the side of the display. I think this would be less noticeable if I had a black version, but mine is in the platinum white or whatever colour they decided to call it. It's not the one that I would have chosen and I think it accentuates the bezels on the phone. Even though the bezels on the phone are very small, I would definitely go with the dark version just so you get that really clean front when the phone is turned off. I absolutely love the curved corners on the display, I think it really complements the form factor and it works nicely with the outside edge of the phone, even though the angles don't completely mesh up. And the big impact that the tiny bezel has is when you're holding this phone, it feels like something about the same size as a Pixel. It's slightly larger, but it's not anything massive. Yet you're getting so much more screen for your money. Holding this in your hand, it feels very similar to the iPhones and the Pixels of this world. It's got the chamfered edges, it's got the visible antenna lines. It's of definitely the same kind of design mold. That being said, it does feel really nice and it feels a little bit less slippy than the Pixel in the hand. As has been the trend with LG in recent years, they've got the fingerprint scanner on the back and it is also a clickable button. This makes perfect sense to me, your finger is already on the back of the phone because that's where your fingerprint scanner is and that's where your finger rests naturally anyway. Why do you need to do a different movement to actually turn the phone on? You can just touch your fingerprint scanner without clicking the button and it will turn the phone on but it's nice knowing that you can then just press exactly where your finger is and just turn the phone off. The fingerprint scanner works very reliably, although it's definitely slightly slower than the Google Pixel. To make up for the fact that you can't reach the power button when your phone is on the table, it's got the general suite of LG features that allow you to turn the screen on and off using a series of gestures and taps. Regardless of what app you're running, you can just double tap on your status bar and this will turn your screen off. And you can then use a knock code to securely unlock your phone really quickly. And the G6 also comes with an option for an always on display. LG's version is truly always on, so unless your phone is in your pocket or face down on the table, you get notification information in the time from your screen. And there are a couple of different options that you can choose from. This is running on a Snapdragon 821 quad core processor with 4GB of RAM. It doesn't feel quite as snappy as the Pixel, but that is definitely more software than hardware. That being said, it's a very smooth experience and it feels like a 2017 flagship should. This model has 32GB of internal storage and it also has space for an external SD card, which is a feature that I think every single flagship phone should currently have. The battery on the G6 is a 3300mAh battery which puts it on the upper end of batteries at the moment for similarly sized phones. I haven't had this long enough to test and comment fully on the battery life. I got out of bed this morning at half 7, the time of recording this audio is 10.16 and the battery is on 6%. So I'm getting about 18 hours of battery life, obviously this is massively dependent on your use cases of the phone. A slightly more accurate representation of the battery, the days that I've used this, this has been getting between 4 and 4 hours 45 minutes screen on time. The G6 is dust resistant and waterproof to an IP67 rating which means that you can submerge this in up to a metre of water and the phone will still work after half an hour. However unfortunately you can't use this to answer your tweets in the shower as the water messes up the touch response of the screen. So whilst it's not fully usable yet in wet conditions, it does mean that if you drop it in a puddle or in the bathroom, then you're not going to damage the phone and if you're walking around in the rain, you don't need to worry about water getting in and harming your device. As someone who takes a lot of photos on their smartphone, for me, the camera is one of the key features. On the back of the phone, you've got two 13 megapixel sensors and you can use these for a normal mode or you can go into wide angle which allows you to shoot at 125 degrees. And the amount of detail that this allows you to capture is staggering. If you compare some of the images I've got, you seem to be zooming out past where you're taking the photo from, it's really quite impressive. 
and even the front facing camera gets a field of view of 100 degrees and this means it's really good for doing selfies because you can get more people in a group and let's be honest that is pretty much the only use for a front facing camera. And the actual app itself has a crap ton of different features. This goes from filters to different effects and you can tweak pretty much everything that you want. I'm not going to go into full detail here, but if you're someone who likes tweaking with every aspect of your shot, then the G6 might appeal to you. One feature that's really cool but slightly disappointing is the ability to shoot in 18x9. This means that your photo will completely fill the screen, which feels really, really satisfying when you're taking the photo, and it gives the illusion that you're fitting in a lot more. The only issue with this is that it shoots in much lower resolution. That being said, it's a really cool feature, and I'll be digging deeper in my full review. Overall, I've been pretty impressed with the camera. The response rate is really good, takes photos really quickly, and as long as you've got good light, it performs pretty much as well as the Pixel. However, in low light, I have noticed it generates a little bit more noise than the Pixel. Although, as I said, there is so much stuff that you can tweak with that camera, I'm sure I can get the images to come out at a higher quality. But for now, I would say that if you just want to pick a phone up and go, then the Google Pixel's camera is slightly better, but the G6's is not going to disappoint. If the G6 is turned off, you can double tap on the volume down button and this will launch the camera, but this only works when the screen is off and I do miss that gesture when I'm just surfing around my phone, just walking through the street and I want to really quickly pull out my camera and take a photo of something. Coming from the Pixel, I've also missed the ability to swipe down on my fingerprint scanner and open my notification panel. However, you can remedy this by adding a shortcut to your navigation bar that lets you expand your notification panel. And this is one of the really cool aspects of the G6. You can put shortcuts into your nav bar. It's not quite there yet. There's definitely scope to improve. It'd be great if you could launch specific applications from your nav bar, or if you could put a folder there, or specific setting shortcuts. At the moment, you're limited to having a button that will expand your notifications. One that will access this new quick note feature that takes a screenshot and allows you to draw over it, which is really, really useful and I think you should just replace the screenshot function completely, although you can still get a screenshot by holding the volume down button and the power button, although this does feel a little bit clunky. And you can also add a button that will allow you to open floating apps. And I do love how you can open your notifications straight from your navigation bar, and it makes this phone even easier to use one-handed. Right out of the gate, you can choose different themes for your G6. This not only changes how your home screen looks, but it will change your keyboard as well as your settings menu. And this is a feature that I really like. And the fact that you can just adjust this straight in the settings with LG is fantastic. And it's something that Google needs to really get baked into stock Android. So now I've said some of the things I like about the G6, now I'm going to list some of my least favourite features. So from all the good points to the bad points. And the first one is that the body is made of glass. If this was made of metal, it would be far more durable, and you do kind of expect that from a flagship device, even if it's 100 quid cheaper than most of the competition. Also, on the front of the phone, you've got the LG logo. This is something Samsung has finally stopped doing with the S8, and I can't not unsee it. Now I'm used to using a Pixel with a completely clean front, even though there's a lot of bezel. And the final thing that I don't particularly like on the G6 is the home screen options. There are three different ones you can choose from. One of them is a sort of iOS clone where every app that you install immediately goes to your home screen and from there you can put them into different folders but you don't have an app drawer. The next version is a really basic home screen which is designed for younger people and much older people. And then the third option is much closer to what you expect with stock Android. So you've got a home screen which can populate with widgets and then you've got an app drawer. My main issue with this is that LG have made steps to make this quite customizable. So you can use a custom icon, but you have to set this manually for every single app. If you're going to bother giving custom icon support, why not just make it so you can just download an icon pack from the Play Store and install it straight to your home screen. And the thing that really irritates me is that on the hybrid home screen where you've got the app drawer, there's just no attention to detail. There's this huge gutter which runs between the top of your soft key bar and the bottom of your dock icons and it's completely unnecessary but all that being said i'm really enjoying my time with the lg g6 the wide angle lens on the camera is super super impressive i love how this thing feels in the hand and the main event as i said at the start of this video is the screen it is big it is beautiful the curved sides are absolutely gorgeous and it's going to be really interesting pitting this against the galaxy s8 in a couple of weeks so there you are guys, that is a run through of all the things that I've noted down from my experience of the G6 over the last couple of days. If you've got any questions, please do not hesitate to comment below. Thank you very much for watching. You can follow me on my social media networks with the links in the description. Go ahead and subscribe if you haven't already. In the future, I'm going to be doing the S8 versus the G6 versus the Pixel. So if that is something you might be interested in, make sure to hit the subscribe button to know when it will come out. 
I'd like to thank LG for sending me this phone for review. And I would like to thank you for watching this far. As I said before, please comment if there is anything I haven't covered. And I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.